Well, what's up guys? My name is Ed and welcome to the channel. If you like the idea of budgeting well, getting cash back, maximizing your credit card usage and taking trips that you never thought possible, you found the right channel. I'm so glad you're here. And today I'm talking about how my wife and I got to take, honestly, the trip of a lifetime. We got to spend nine days, eight nights on the island of Oahu in Hawaii. And the best part is we did it for $159 a day. And if we can do it, you can do it too. So if you wanna know more, if you wanna know how I did it, stay around. But before you do that, I love if you hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Listen, just by liking this video, it is free, it is easy, and it help make sure this content gets to more people. It is the best way you can help support the channel. So do that and let's get started. All right, so when it comes to maximizing your credit card usage, everyone has different goals. And within the credit card community, there are really two basic camps. Now, I am greatly generalizing here, but there are two primary schools of thought when it comes to maximizing your credit card usage, and that is cash back versus travel. All right, cash back versus travel. Cash back is really simple. It, it's exactly what it says. You wanna maximize the cash that you are getting back into your pocket from every single purchase. So that means you're looking at your highest spend categories. Do I spend a lot of time eating out or uh, do I spend a lot of money on groceries or gas or whatever the category of spend might be. You wanna find cards that give you the highest percentage rate back in cash back that you can for all of those, all of those categories, all of those purchases. Now cashback, you can have really simple setups or you can have really complex setups where you have essentially a different card for every category of purchase. It's, it's really up to you. But the best part about cashback, that, that whole community that really buys in the cashback, is it's simple. It's easy to understand. I'm gonna swipe this card and I'm gonna get money back for every purchase. That is money back in my pocket, money that has helped taking off, uh, that I do not have to spend on a statement. And it's simple, it's easy to understand, it's easy to compute, and it's just pretty much straightforward. The other side is travel, the travel community. Now the travel community can honestly be a little pretentious towards the cashback community, if, I, if, if I'm being honest. But the travel community is really just kind of slamming their hands down and saying, why would you take cash back when you have the possibility, that's key, the possibility of getting way more value from using the points that you get from credit cards to have travel experiences that you wouldn't otherwise have. Because that's the truth. The points that you get back from like Chase Ultimate Reward Points or American Express Membership uh, Rewards or um, the City Thank You Points, all of those different ecosystems have partners, hotel partners, airline partners that you can transfer these points out at different ratios and you have a very high chance of being able to maximize the redemption of those points to get way more value. So where you might get for the new Chase Sapphire Preferred Bonus that's going on uh, as of this filming, where the 100,000 points might be worth roughly 750 in cash back, you might be able to get 1,500, 2,000, $3,000, I don't, I don't know, in value of travel benefits. If you book the right hotel or if you book the right airline with those, using those points and you're redeeming those points. So the travel community is just saying, hey, there is way better ways to use these points that you get much higher value. Now, the biggest flaw with the travel community that the cashback people love to just shout from the rooftops is if you're using your points for travel, it's gonna cause you to spend money that you wouldn't otherwise be spending. And I don't disagree with this, right? If I, if I use my points to redeem for a hotel and uh, you know, uh, travel accommodations, that trip is still gonna cost me money in, in food and, and, and random expenses on a trip and souvenirs, whatever the case may be. I'm going to spend money. The question is, am I gonna spend that money, would I have spent that money otherwise or not? Now, being candid, I fall into the travel community. I want to use my credit card usage and maximize my points to travel and have experiences that I wouldn't otherwise be able to have if I wasn't maximizing my credit cards but I know that I'm gonna spend money. 
I know that there is going to be costs associated with these trips. But traveling is a family value of my wife and I. We know we wanna travel every year, so within our budget we have a travel savings line and we're putting money away every month and we're aiming to travel every single year with ourselves, with our kids. What I'm aiming to do is to use my credit cards and the points I'm getting from that to allow the money that I'm already setting aside for travel to not just be put towards a trip that I can afford out of pocket, but if I can supplement with great travel accommodations and, and great hotel accommodations and then use that money towards that, at the end of the day, I'm gonna get a better vacation experience, a better travel experience. And so that's me, that's my goal. I'm not saying that has to be your strategy or your goal, but that's what we do. And so you kinda of have to figure out for yourself, are you a cashback person or are you a travel person? And you have to kinda of understand and weigh the pros and cons. Maybe I'll do a video on that full thing in the future. But you have to begin to understand what do you wanna do. And so for us, the year was 2019 when I started digging into, okay, I can use credit cards to really get a lot of value back. And I just decided I wanted to get my wife and I to Hawaii. And so I set out and I did a ton of research to figure out, okay, what cards do I need to have? What sign-up bonuses do I need to acquire in order to be able to get my wife and I to Hawaii for free? That was my goal, to get us to Hawaii for free. And I think I did it. And so this video is not gonna talk about the money we spent on food, it's not gonna talk about the money we spent on experiences because that's gonna change for everybody. And depending on who you are and the types of things you wanna do or what you like to eat, those expenses are gonna be different for everybody. But this video is gonna focus on really travel accommodations and your hotel accommodations. Things that every single one of us, if you're going to Hawaii, you have to spend money on travel and where you're gonna stay. And so for us, we were able to do this trip for $1,439 that averages out to $159 a day. And I'm gonna tell you how I did it. All right, so the very first way I wanna talk about how I accomplished this trip is to tell you what cards I used. And so there were really three cards that I was targeting to be able to do this trip. One was the Chase Sapphire Preferred. The second one was the Chase Hyatt co-branded card, and the third was the Chase Southwest Performance Business. And so, of course, all three of those are in Chase. If you are new to the whole credit card maximizing game, uh, you understand why I did that. If you're not, let me just give you a brief overview that Chase has kind of an unwritten rule called the 524 rule. And this rule says that they will only approve you for a card if you have less than five Hard pull, hard pulls on your your credit score, your, your your credit, within the last 24 months. And so what that essentially means is, if you want to maximize value in the credit card game, if you're going to be applying for a lot of cards over the next few years or the next few decades, whatever the case may be, you basically need to start with Chase because of the opportunity cost. If you start somewhere else, it's going to be hard to go back to Chase. You're going to have to let time pass, roughly 24 months, two years before you can really dig back in. And so the opportunity cost is there to start with Chase if you're new into the credit card game. So I knew I wanted to start with Chase, and so I was looking at these Chase cards. Now I wanna look at each of these cards individually and say, what were the sign-up bonuses that I was chasing, and why did I choose these cards? So the very first card that I got was the Chase Sapphire Preferred. At the time, the bonus was 60,000 points. This was after 4,000 in spend for three months. That was for me. Currently, there is an amazing sign-up bonus for this card, 100,000 points. I'm gonna have my referral link in the description below. It is a massive way to support me and support the channel if you use that code. I appreciate it so much. But the Chase Sapphire Preferred, which is an all-around great card. It had great multipliers in multiple different categories. And this really got me started in the Chase ecosystem. Again, I knew I wanted to start in Chase because of the 524 rule. And this just really allowed me to take advantage of the Chase Ultimate Rewards portal. I got a multiplier because I was redeeming with the Chase Sapphire Preferred of 1.25%. Uh, and so I was really able to maximize having this card in my wallet to take advantage of how I was going to ultimately redeem Chase points. 
The second card that I applied for was the Chase Hyatt co-branded card. At the time, the Chase Hyatt offer was 50,000 points. It was 25,000 points after you had 3,000 in spend in the first three months, and then another 25,000 points after you spent another 3,000 in spend, and that just had to be within the first six months. Uh, the other great thing about this card is it gives you an anniversary night. So even though there is an annual fee of, I believe, $89, um, I'll, I'll put down the screen if I'm wrong, but it comes with an anniversary night. And so I knew I wanted to take advantage of that as well. But in total, I was looking at 50,000 points in Hyatt. And now again, that offer is even higher. Referral link in the description below. But the offer right now is for 60,000 points. Again, 30,000 points after I believe it's 3,000 spent in the first three months. And then another 30,000 points after again, another 3,000 spend within total the first six months. So the Chase High card. And then the third card I got was my very first business card. And so business cards are, are not difficult to get. Obviously, you need to have a business. And for me, I'm just a sole proprietor. I have some side hustles on the side that I do make money on. And so I just applied for this card, really just using actually my um, social security number. But I do have a sole proprietor EIN uh, tax number as well. And so I was able to apply for that. But you can just apply for a business card with your social security number if you are, in fact, a sole proprietor. And there are a million ways to be a sole proprietor. You could drive Uber. Uh, you could even be thinking about starting a business. Maybe you're gonna start a YouTube channel and you hope to make profit from that. But there are a lot of ways to justify applying for that card. Now, do not apply for a business card if you have no intention of making any money on, on the side or, or making money for a living based on you know, your sole proprietorship or whatever, if you have an LLC or whatever. Uh, but for a lot of people, you have already, even if you made 50 bucks this year doing something on the side, you can actually get a business credit card. And so I got the Chase Southwest Performance Business. I chose this card because my wife and I fly Southwest all the time. We're in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Her family's in Florida. So we're flying Southwest a ton. At the time, it was an 80,000 point bonus available to us. I believe that is actually still the bonus that you can get uh, today using, again, the referral link in the description below. But we were chasing the 80,000 point bonus. It was 80,000 points after 5,000 in spend in I think the first uh, three, four months. Uh, but I was able to obviously chase that bonus. But here's where things get interesting because I also chose this card because I was chasing the Southwest Companion Pass. All right, so what is the Southwest Companion Pass? This, in my opinion, the Southwest Companion Pass is one of the best perks in the entire travel card industry. Now, it is super helpful if you have a, a Southwest hub near you, you're flying Southwest a lot, but the Southwest Companion Pass, when you earn it based off of a number of points earned in Southwest in a given calendar year, uh, or you take a certain amount of flights, the companion pass is basically a buy one get one feature where you name a companion for me i named my wife as my companion and every time i buy a southwest flight i can add my wife as a companion essentially for free you have to pay taxes which is usually about eleven dollars and twenty cents for a round trip but the it's, it's basically a free passenger, it's a free ticket for every flight that I did. Now I knew, and this is obviously purely based on my scenario, I knew that we were doing a ton of home renovations in 2019. Those costs, those bills were gonna come up in early 2020. And so I got this card, I had a lot of expenses, I was able to use the card to pay off the expenses. And this is my scenario, obviously I know this, my use case is gonna be different than yours. I put roughly $27,000 in spend on the card in 2020. And the beautiful part about that was with the 80,000 signup bonus and the 27,000 in spend based on some of the multipliers I was able to get, I was able to earn the Southwest Companion Pass pretty early in 2020. And so I know 2020, year of COVID, disregard all of that. I was able to earn Southwest Companion Pass, I think it was around in May was when, when it all hit. And so I was able to receive the Companion Pass for the remainder of 2020 and then all of 2021. 
All right, so I got the cards, I got the companion pass, I got the sign up bonuses. Now, how do we actually book the trip? So I just wanna take you on to the Southwest website right now and I wanna show you, I wanna show you an example of how you can basically use Southwest points to get where you wanna go. And so for me, there was a very specific flight path that I was targeting in order to get there. Again, I'm based in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And so for me, I wanted to get from Pittsburgh to Oakland, California, and then from Oakland to Honolulu. And so I'm just gonna do a quick search. I'm only gonna look for the Oakland to Honolulu leg uh, at the moment. Uh, but we're gonna search in points, we're gonna look it up, and after you do the search, you're able to search based on their low fare calendar, and you can already begin to see right now in July uh, what some of the costs are associated with this leg of the flight. If you jump in August, uh, you, you can roughly see 16,000 points seems to be an average. We got some of 6,000 points. Again, those are, those are one-way accommodations. Uh, jump in to September. Again, you got more of the 6,000. We were targeting Monday and Tuesday travel dates. Uh, and so if you jump, let's even go towards December because we were looking at December originally too. You can see there's flights to be had one way for 6,000 points, Oakland to Honolulu. January is not fully out yet. These look a little higher, but for ours, when I look back on our account, our flight from Pittsburgh to Oakland and Oakland to Honolulu roughly cost us 60,000 points. And now that was just for me. And with the companion pass, Katie got to fly free. And so I don't remember the exact, exact value of the, the price in dollars for these flights, but I remember I was getting roughly 1.5, 1.6 uh, cents per point for uh, my Southwest points, which was fantastic. It was pretty good value for Southwest Redemptions, but it was even more than that because I was taking an entire companion for free. Now, if you're flying to Hawaii, there might be other airlines you'd rather do, but for us, this is what we could accomplish, this is what we could do, and we were really excited to get there for, for free using points. Now, for our hotel accommodations, we knew we were gonna do Hyatt, and there were multiple Hyatts in Honolulu, Waikiki area that could have worked for us. There's one that right now you can get for 12,000 points a night, just a standard room with king bed, uh, no ocean view in Honolulu right now, 12,000 points. I have some friends who are currently chasing the Sapphire Preferred sign-up bonus of 100,000 points. Again, that offer is in the description below but that could get them eight nights alone in that room in Hawaii right now. Now for us, we did want to do the ocean view and so we, we splurged a little bit in what we were trying to do. We went to the Hyatt centric Waikiki and for us, we were looking at their ocean view suite room with a king bed. This ran 30,000 points a night and so the way we did it is I was able to use 60,000 points from my Hyatt account plus my anniversary night and then also I had roughly 90,000 points from generic spending, uh, transferring some from my wife, but not much. But I had over 60,000 points that I got from my sign-up bonus from when I signed up for the card that I was able to use through the Chase Ultimate Rewards Travel Portal. And so I was able to book six nights, five with points, one with the anniversary certificate. And then the other two nights, we did pay for out of pocket. That is just something we chose to do. Now I'm gonna put up on the screen uh, our bill from the hotel. You're gonna see two charges for $249. Those were the two nights that we actually did pay for out of pocket. Uh, but that hotel alone, $250 uh, you know, times eight nights, you know, you're looking at $2,000 plus in accommodations that we were able to, to get. You know, uh, so that might have not been, uh, there, there's varying degrees of value of what you wanna say of, of how we redeem those points, but at the end of the day, this, this hotel was essentially free for us. There were a lot of other resort fees and parking fees. Uh, we also had to book a rental car for the week, and so we used Enterprise, and uh, you know, that was a little over $300, I believe $349, $329. But 
when you add all that up, we're able to do our expenses for, again, uh, a total of $1,439 with an average of $159 a day. And this was a trip that we otherwise would not have honestly been able to take. And we had the trip of a lifetime. We got to go to Lani Kai Beach, which is like one of the best beaches and, and that you can visit in Hawaii uh, overall. Uh, absolutely incredible. Got to go on the pillbox hike there. Uh, we got to go to Luau's. Maybe our favorite thing was going to Waimea Bay and watching surfers surf on 30 foot plus tall waves. It was, it was stunning. We got to swim in Waimea Falls. We ate a ton of shave ice. We got to go to Pearl Harbor. Uh, which was truly a, a, such a sobering experience. Got to go to the Dole Plantation, uh, Kualoa Ranch, where Jurassic Park was filmed. Um, the Polynesian Cultural Center had our, maybe our favorite luau. It was an unbelievable trip, and we did it all because of how we use our credit cards, and you can too. That's what I want you to know. You can do the same thing. I mentioned this before, but right now with the Chase Sapphire Preferred bonus that could get you eight nights uh, in a Hyatt hotel in Waikiki Beach right now. Uh, so what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? I have another video on how to get into the credit card game and, and really how to do it in a wise way. So do that too. But what are you waiting for? I really believe that if we can do it, you can do it too. And so if you like this content, if you're interested in knowing more, I got to tell you, subscribe to the channel for more videos so you can learn more about how to really take full advantage of maximizing your credit cards. Like this video, share it with someone, and until next time, I'll see you.